but you can kind of mix it up. You can do some shopping in between. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to another video from Ling Ling. What do you think about my cup? I know. Anyways, <laughs> so today's video is going to be about the must see places here in Beijing. A few weeks ago, my friend came to Beijing and he was like, Ling Ling, where should I go? What should I see? Can you write me a plan? And I was like, hmm, I actually can, because I've showed a lot of people around Beijing and I do have a lot of um, favorite places to go, but I also have, I also know about all the top sightseeing spots and I've been there. And I thought, why not share this knowledge with you guys? Because I know. Uh, that you want to come to Beijing, right? 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 Yeah, yeah. Come, come. <laughs> okay, before we get started, please give me a thumbs up for this video because you know it's going to be awesome. Subscribe for more videos from Ling Ling. I need your support. Let's do it together. And also, please help me translate this video to your language if you can. If you have time, that would be lovely. So, without further ado, let's get started on the my list of top nine must-see sightseeing spots in Beijing. The absolute number one of your list when visiting Beijing is of course the Great Wall, a masterpiece I, even I can't get enough of. The closest part of the wall is called Badaling and you can take a public bus from Dushengmen or book a tour with your hostel or hotel. If you want a last touristy place you should look out for Jinshanling or Gubei Ko, which have not been going through renovation and is more old style. Okay, number two on my list is Tianmen. Tianmen is a famous pedestrian street located in the center of Beijing. It has a history of more than 570 years. In old times, the street was a place with craftsman workshops and theaters. It has been undergoing renovation and was reopened in 2008. Now, you can go there to buy Chinese souvenirs, enjoy beautiful architecture, and go shopping crazy on your favorite foreign brands while enjoying a Starbucks, a coffee. I know how much you guys love coffee, and I'm telling you, if you're going to do all these different sightseeing spots in one day in Beijing, you definitely need that cup of coffee. <laughs> Just telling you guys. Okay, number three on my list. People say the real Chinese culture is to be found inside the slim alleys of the hutongs. In the small alleys, you will find low gray buildings, also known as the courtyards, with old people sitting outside on small chairs while chatting and playing cards. This is where you'll find the real old style local life and charm of Beijing. My suggestion is that you go to Dashilan, which is on the side of Qianmen. So you can go Qianmen fast and Dashilan. It's a great place to start your walk around the hutongs and without a plan, you should just go explore the neighboring hutongs because I know you will have so much fun. And you can also find local food there, you can get your dumplings in a sm one of the small local restaurants. I'm just going to tell you that, well, sometimes they have pictures on the wall so you can order from the wall, but uh, a lot of the places also only has a Chinese menu so you can practice your Chinese. It's gonna be fun! <laughs> Moving on to uh, number four, which is one of China's absolute most important places to visit, according to every single Chinese person you talk to. This is, of course, Tiananmen Square, where the picture of Mao Zedong, the old chairman of China, is hanging and smiling to... No, he's not smiling. Sorry, guys. <laughs> He's not smiling. <laughs> you can also see people square from uh, Tiananmen Square and the entrance to the Forbidden City is also there. Be prepared to stand in line for the security check before walking into the square. You can take the subway straight to there. But you can also go straight from the hutongs I just told you about because this plan I've made for you guys is like if you're really good at traveling and like you're, you want to do a really intense day in Beijing, you can actually start from, uh, not from the Great Wall, but number two, Tiananmen go down to Dazlan and then go down to uh, Tiananmen Square that I'm talking about now and then move on to the next spot I have on my list. So yeah, I know. Thank you Ling Ling. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> 
Number five on the list is the Forbidden City. From the square, you were just at the Tiananmen Square, you can walk towards Mao's picture and follow the masses towards the entrance of the Forbidden City. The walk from the square and to the actual entrance of the Forbidden City is quite long, so don't worry if you don't see it straight away. Walk straight forward and it will show up after two other towers. I think you call them towers. I'll show you a picture. This is what I call tower. As I remember, you have to go through two of them and then the entrance is gonna show up. You see some security guards, you see some people there, you see a ticket office, it's all translated into English, so don't worry, it's very easy to get around. The Forbidden City is an absolute must-see as well. You can buy a ticket at the entrance and walk inside to explore this wonderland of old Chinese architecture and history. Just telling you guys, this is a little suggestion, remember to bring your best trainers like you have to bring some really comfortable shoes because it's gonna be a lot a lot a lot of walking if you're gonna do all these things in one day Number six is the Jingshan Park. When you're out on the other side of the Forbidden City, I would suggest for you to go straight across the road. Well, you actually have to go under the road um, through a tunnel. But uh, you can see that. It's very easy. You can see everyone is doing the same as well. And also there is a fence on the road, so you can't, unless you want to jump the fence, you have to go under. On the other side, you can see an entrance to Jingshan Park. You buy a ticket, which is really cheap, and you can walk inside. Okay, so in this park, you can climb to the top of the little mountain and watch the sunset over the Forbidden City. How beautiful is that? I'm sorry, I don't have a picture of that, but I know it's really beautiful because I've seen it before. So the view is stunning no matter what time of day you get there. Just try to go on a day when it is not polluted because then it's not going to be pretty and you're not going to be able to see the Forbidden City. So if you're already, if you're in the Forbidden City and you can see, okay, the weather is really bad and the sky is really gray and polluted, then go to, don't climb up the little mountain Jingshan Park because you're just going to be disappointed. Just telling you, like Jingshan Park is only for the view of the Forbidden City. So if the sun is not shining, um, don't go there. Yeah, don't waste your time. Anyways, from Jingshan Park, you can go to my next musty spot. Yeah, um, just gonna say, guys, it would be really, uh, it would be a very good idea if you download an uh, offline uh, map for your phone that's not blocked in China. So check that beforehand. Um, because then you can use the map to get around. And from Jingshan Park, you can go straight to our next point which is called Beihai. So this is another park. I know I have a lot of parks here, but I really love the parks. Uh, the park was first opened to the public in 1925 and has since been a place where locals go to dance, exercise, sing, and socialize. You can take a stroll around the massive lake inside the park and you'll feel like a new person when you finish, I promise. No, I don't, because if you don't feel like that and it was raining, then it's not my fault. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> but it's a very beautiful place. I really, really love that place. I'm definitely I'm gonna go there and make more videos for you guys because it's beautiful. So let's say this was the first day, you're tired, you go home and take a chill. Okay, the next day I would suggest you to go to the Summer Palace, which is number eight on my list. Again, you can take the subway straight there, so no problem. Actually, most of these sightseeing spots, they have a subway station. So if you wanna go to any of these, just ask in your hostel, your hotel, and they're gonna tell you what the name of the station is. Or if you wanna ask me, you can also just comment below and let me know and I'll, uh, I'll, 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 I'll tell you. Yes, of course I will. The Summer Palace is, according to me, another must-see place. The palace have been burned down and built up a few times, but it is still a stunning place with beautiful Chinese architecture and a huge lake where you can rent a boat and sail around with your friends on a hot summer day. The Summer Palace was originally built for the Emperor of China, but is now a public park for everyone to go and visit. And I think you should too. So the last one is another park. <laughs> I know, you must be tired of the park now. But you can kind of mix it up. You can do some shopping in between and then you can go to the next park. Like this one, um, this park is located in another area again. So it's um, recommended to do it on a separate day. But yeah, number nine on my list is called Tian Tan Park or Temple of Heaven. You probably know the English name if you have been researching your trip to China. Um, it's a park with the most beautiful temples and pagodas. You can also see locals play games and socialize with each other there and uh, the park park is huge and you can spend hours upon hours upon hours there. If you feel like shopping afterwards, the pearl market with lots of goods, also copy bags and stuff, you can 
by Parkening Fun, <laughs> if you like that. Uh, it's actually located just besides the park. So if you're taking the subway there, you can see the market on one side and you can see the park on the other side. Shishi Ling Ling for telling me. I know, I know, you're welcome. So guys, I hope you like this video. Um, I would really love to know if you guys want to know if you guys want more of these facts and tips videos for traveling in China, studying in China, working in China, you know, because I know a little bit about it, you know, a little bit. So um, if you would like that or you have something specific you want to know, just uh, let me know in the comments below and I'll make a video about it because I love making videos for you. Whoa, whoa, okay. <laughs> Coffee is falling out. Uh, I love making, making videos for you guys and I really wanted to make it easy for you guys to come to China, you know, because China is the place to be. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, um, leave a comment below. Also, again, if you didn't, thumbs up. Subscribe more videos from Ling Ling and uh, I'll talk to you again very, very soon. Ling Ling is out. See ya and stay tuned. Bye bye.